this is me. And I chose to, uh, to show you some recent pictures because I used to be hippie, an old hippie with uh, ideas, whatever that may be. Um, but I decided to be a journalist after all. When I finished my courses, my, uh, when I graduated as a, as a journalist many years ago, I had a very idealistic, very optimistic view on the role of society and the role of media in society and journalists in society. I thought that journalists, every journalist should be like I thought I wanted to be, which is like try to make the world a better place by uh, revealing truth, whatever that may be, or by fighting injustice. After 20 years of experience in media, radio, TV, magazines, papers, all kinds of levels, I of course discovered that it's not an everyday job to say to people, you have to be a better person, right? I saw it was more exception than the rule to make a better world. Anyway, today I can say I'm a very happy employee of the Hoist University College of West Flanders and every day I, I praise myself or at least I think I'm privileged because I can use my media skills for social causes. In the next 10 minutes I try to convince you that when you link media with social goals, something magic, magical can happen. And it all comes down to this organization that we started within Hawest uh, just a year ago. And it sounds like this if you listen to it. Goedemiddag, je luistert naar Twindo. Straffe radio voor de Jong Kortrijk. Okay, for the non-Dutch uh, speakers, Traffe Radio for Young Kortrijk means, I would like to say Kekas Radio, but it's like Adventurous Radio for Young Kortrijk. Um, we make radio in this building, very close to, uh, it's in the heart of uh, the city of Kortrijk, close to train station, close to the campuses of Hoa West. And we really founded it, it's from Hoa West, but we really said let's not make campus radio, radio within the confines of the school, but let's bring it out in the city because we have all kinds of people working for the radio, not only students. It's, um, in two months, we rebuilt in the old Radio 2 studios in Kortrijk. We built a newsroom. We, that's me, and some crazy volunteers. Day and night, we worked on it to build a newsroom and a professional studio. We did everything ourselves. And what can you expect when you have radio? You have presenters. So along the way, we have people who present programs, we have DJs, we have uh, live sessions of local bands, and that's what you could think is a radio. These are some programs we have. We have 18 programs, mainly music programs. We give a platform to music that you don't hear often on mainstream uh, media, such as punk rock, noise, uh, singer-songwriter, uh, folk music. But really, we support also local bands, bands that don't have the budget, promotion budget, marketing budget, to be heard on big national uh, media. But next to that, we also have information, word programs, we call them, which is sometimes, yeah, there's sometimes there are unique programs that you also don't hear on the big national media, such as an erotic program, uh, program about radio documentaries. We also have an English uh, spoken game program. So everyone is welcome to join in and to create radio with us. But it's, it would be quite boring if we would stand here and say that we just make radio. We tend to believe that we are more than radio. We are the core. Radio, Quindo, is the core of a, a true media lab. And uh, because I don't like to talk too much, I want to show you a little movie that I made together with some students from Havest, Divine students. Uh, in 60 seconds, this one explains what we are actually all about. Quindo presents adventurous web radio for and by young people in Kortrijk. We offer original programs about the city and feature non-mainstream music with a big focus on local talent. But that's not all. Quindo is so much more than just radio. We are a professionally equipped media lab, a laboratory where youngsters can experiment with all types of media. Next to radio, we produce photos, videos, articles, social media, and web applications. Quindo's driving force is its young volunteers. That's why we are always looking for creative talent with a passion for music and media. Money isn't the reward, but you'll gain lots of skills and a bunch of crazy friends. Interested? Get in touch via info at quindo.be. Voilà, did you recognize the voice? Right? 
So remember that we are more than radio, that we also teach all kinds of media. When we say media, it's not always only like a journalistic product. The medium, like a journalistic news or whatever, we teach that too. But we also teach like uh, the carriers of information, like everything is a medium these days. USB stick, web application, Facebook application, we consider media as a very big thing, social media, okay? How you present yourself, that's also a form of, 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 of a medium. And um, do you know these guys left up? These are the guys from Goose. So we film, we make radio, we make uh, pictures. Um, and how do we teach them? In the school, uh, hours we teach the students. So Quindo is a classroom for students. But in the evening and in spare time we have lots of volunteers who come to join to learn uh, via, web, uh, via workshops, info sessions, even exchanges with, uh, with uh, foreign organizations. We send them also for example to the BBC and we have people from BBC coming in to teach our youngsters. These guys from Sports Hub, from VRT and this is like a class, uh, radio editing, radio technician, and presenting. Um, and all of that, everything that they learn and that they know how to experiment with, we present uh, on a platform that we made ourselves. We, that's students, are volunteers. So this is just renewed our website. You see like uh, the write-up part is, is radio, but we also learn or teach them how to write stories for the web or to take pictures. So it's really across Media Lab. We try to be innovative too. And of course this is a buzzword, innovation, but what is innovative? And we didn't know that we were unique in Flanders, but since uh, two weeks you can listen to us via Facebook. Six organizations called us like, how do you make that? Because we have very passionate students and volunteers. So we really teach each other stuff. I told you it's a mix of students and volunteers. In the day it's a classroom. Here you see we have different departments, nine departments of HOS that are working with our media lab. These are the students of journalism. These are the um, communication students who, together with volunteers, always together with volunteers, think about the campaign because we exist just for one year now. So how will we promote ourselves? How do we make promotion like via flyers or posters or via social media? They have to think about that. This is a design, early, very early design, made by uh, NMCT students, which is new media communication technology students. We have a very big department, game department, digital arts and entertainment. They have their own radio show, an English spoken radio show. The presenter is a Canadian. We have a, a Latvian girl, an Italian girl working on it, and a Flemish boy. So it's really a mix of all kinds of people trying to, to create and to, to educate themselves in media. Even the, the guys from industrial product design. We want to create a mobile studio to make uh, radio and on festivals. We have a lot of volunteers who are crazy enough to think with our product designers. Like, okay, how will we make a studio that's, 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 uh, that can withstand, like, uh, not storm, but rain at least, that you can use indoors and outdoors. So we have a lot of talent. And my task is to facilitate them, to stimulate their talent. The volunteers, quite a lot of volunteers, 165 volunteers after one year. And it's really a mix of people. We have people working in a factory, metal uh, workers, we have people uh, driving a train, we have uh, people working on a cemetery. And just imagine, if you have a student, um, a philosophy student, and you have a, a metal worker, and they're both passionate about, let's say, punk rock, and they want to make a punk rock program, what we do is, we bring them together. We say, okay, you have to think about the DNA, the profile of your program, and work it out. We guide you, we give you workshops, we teach you how to do it, but you have to work together. And you can imagine people from different backgrounds, different skills, different education, they have different ways of communicating with each other. It can clash, it totally can clash, but when it works out, it's, it's fantastic. I'm still an old hippie in a way, you know? So we like to drink too. Um, we give a lot of workshops. In one year, we gave 48 workshops to 1,800 children and young people in Kortrijk. Not only students, but also passionate volunteers, people who are passionate about media and music. But lately, I noticed for a couple of months that a lot, 90%, maybe 9% of the phone calls I got and the emails I got were from social organizations. From a social artistic theater group, from for children from problematic families, 
um, from a lot of uh, immigrants and uh, organizations or organizations to take care of asylum seekers and uh, refugees um, from a technical school. Um, all kinds of people, problem children or problem youth. We tend to say, I have the pretension that we are Adventures Radio for Young Cortec, but we also have a lot of, um, when we have that pretension we want to say for Young Cortec, it has to be for all kinds of young people, not just for the media student who has the ambition to become a media professional, or only for the cultural elite, because they come anyway, all the DJs, musicians, they just come anyway, but we want to reach out also for people who don't have a voice, right? Sounds very idealistic, I know, but we want to give a voice to the voiceless. How? By giving them workshops too. And we notice that they're opening up. A lot of people come in, for example, two days ago I had a, a youth organization with a lot of children from, uh, from uh, immigrants, also from uh, refugees, they come in, and so mostly they're, they're people from dysfunctional families. Mostly they come in and they don't like it. They say, ah, oh, we don't care about making radio. But if you give them responsibility and say, we're going to guide you, and you can decide with your music that you like, with your content, you see them opening up. And they learn some skills. Recently, I had an intern, a social worker, and he, we wanted to take it further, this social impact thingy. We see, like, okay, we noticed that by teaching them media skills, along the way, they also seem to have enhanced the social skills, but we couldn't really measure. How can you measure someone's social skills, right? So we said, let's work with this group of people. Ten students, pupils from Buzo, from Kortrijk, which are mostly children with learning difficulties, from pro problematic families, and we guided them for three months. We gave them the usual, um, uh, the usual workshops, but we noticed that, okay, these youngsters, they have a low self-esteem mostly. Um, they, uh, they were uh, considered mostly like passive, stupid, lazy, because a lot of people told them like, you're not as smart as your neighbor or your brother, because you, you can't do that, so just stay where you are, you can't do anything more. And people acted like lazy and, and, and dumb and passive. We said we try to make a break, we try to break this negative spiral, this self-fulfilling prophecy, by making radio. Let's see what happens. So the goal was trying to measure what the social impact is on making radio. The goal was also to make a live program with these guys. So for three months we were heavily coaching them. I wasn't teaching them. But I decided that the volunteers, the normal volunteers of Quindo, had to teach them. Because, let's say, I tell, you're 16 year old, and I'm 42, which I am. I say, you have to go and watch that movie. He will say, you're old, you're an old father, I, won't, I don't take you seriously. But if your neighbor is 16, your friend is 16, he tells you to watch that movie, you're probably going to listen to him, because he's a peer. So we had a social worker teaching radio technique. We had uh, NMCT students teaching video, we had a communication student teaching them how to use uh, social media and they really liked it, they really liked it and later when we evaluated and we said what did you think about that they said yeah yeah we believed we have skilled teachers even though they're only five years older sometimes so first we let them make radio do the usual stuff, how to prepare for an interview, how to record an interview how to be a presenter, how to interview and you have to see, first they had to interview them, themselves, but later we took them out of the comfort zone. You cannot imagine how difficult it is for some youngsters to step outside and to talk to a stranger with a microphone. They're not journalists, they never used to. No one told them ever that they could talk into a microphone, that they could record their own voice. Look, they went to the people outside on the street and they liked it, right? Even, this is a famous soccer player. For them, that was D-Day for them. They could interview a famous soccer player of Kavi Kortrijk. And then in the studio, they learn all kinds of techniques, how to film. And along the way, I told you, we try to give them social skills. Because making a radio program demands a lot of social skills. Imagine you have to bring someone to the studio to be interviewed. These guys normally pick up the phone. Hey, it's uh, John, and I want you to come to the studio. No, no, no. Put that phone down. Try again. Present yourself, tell the person on the other side of the line what the goal is, 
uh, what kind of radio station you are. So they're not used to that. They're not used to giving feedback and getting feedback, right? These are really normal things for us to negotiate, to meet. When you have a radio program, a live show, you have to be able to deal with stress. You have to be able to plan your time, which is very, very difficult for some of them. So via making a radio program, you see it really grows and grows and grows, not only the self-esteem, but also their social skills. Looking stuff up on the internet, normally they're very much guided. We told them, okay, you have to interview a famous boxer, you look for contacts. They were so happy that they independently could look and use their computer. In daily life, they couldn't. In school, certainly they can't. We taught them how to make a Facebook page. Look, they did it themselves and they were very happy with it. And at 13th of May, they had their own radio show. And really, the reactions were enormous. Not only in the media, not only in school, but certainly with themselves. Did we change lives? No. Did we have an impact? Yes. At least for a short period of time. The school said that they, they saw that a lot of timid people who were very shy opened up in three months. They said, yeah, it enhances their low uh, self-esteem and their minority complex. We don't know. When you ask the students or the pupils, we had a system with red and, and green cards, and they said, like, okay, red card, this is what we didn't like, and green card, what we liked. What they really liked is that they were given responsibility because they were deciding with their own music, with their own content, who to interview and how they can make their own radio program. They presented, they did the reportage, they made even the jingles, the sweeps, they did the Facebook. So we trusted them that they also could do something. Uh, conclusion, it worked. We saw some enhancement of the social skills, of the self-esteem, uh, but it's a very labor-intensive thing. Okay? We noticed that three months is not enough time to really say we had a big impact. But at least we could drop a seed and it keeps on growing. Because they keep on asking, when can we return? When can we have our own radio program? But we also noticed that if you don't choose the right partner in this whole experiment, it doesn't work out. We saw that the school has deadlines. You have to have exams and you have... I'm going to give you a number at the end of, of your exam. It doesn't work out with social projects. A, a project with social goals is a very slow, slow, slow project. So don't, don't put pressure on these guys, believe in their talents, focus on their interest, give them responsibility and allow them to make mistakes. And in the end, it will be all okay. This is just one little case, one little example, but I'm sure that we will continue on the same path with the Quindle because we believe that we want to be and make radio for everyone in Kortrijk. Thank you.